Bar guys, let them know that they need to be hearing what Scott Joseph is talking about and just uh, getting some of the fun, getting a little bit of an upshift and uplift to your day uh, because it's worth having good, fun conversations that are constructive <laughs> and are building each other up. Uh, okay. That's ultimately all that we're trying to do here. Uh, that's all that we're trying to make sure that you take inside of your culture. It's a uh, it's an attitude of trying to build each other up and try to encourage mm-hmm. each other. And sometimes it comes with a jab. Sometimes it comes with a little bit of a poke, you know, but every single time it's designed to make something come out of you, right? I love the creativity in the jabs, right? It's like it's always a new oh. way. It's, it's cool when you can hit them with a cool jab, too. Yeah. Like, did you even get that yet? Be like, Oh, I got you. Okay, I see. You know what I mean? It's like sometimes it takes a little while to pick them up. But I love uh, the, that kind of a culture uh, that you have because it, it's truly what it takes to have a, a brotherhood. And if yeah. you're trying to build family and trying to build the tribe, you have okay. to be able to, to rub up against each other in a way that may ha- bring a little friction, may make you have to reevaluate yourself, may make you have yeah. to uh, Don't be too sensitive, change people. a few things. Or, right, not to be sensitive. You know, in this I'm business, you're going to get a, a lot of no's. Got to have a little fixed. That's why I think we're so great in this business because of the, the amount of no's we get and we keep going. You know what I mean? The amount of rejection we, we take on and we continue to um, excel. Right, and it's, it. it's it's exciting. you actually embrace the it. nose. You know, you embrace it because you know that as many nose you get, there's going to be tons of yeses. Yeah, you have to get them right. So much like you know, he talked about when he you know presented to the Hook family and you know showed it, it wasn't the same the first time. You know, he went back and he fixed that. He's doing other things, and he, you know, you learn from those types of things. That's right. That's the thing, folks. There is no failures. You know, I'm sure you guys all heard this. There's no failures. You know, all all there is is either you you either win or you learn. You're, it, that's that's it. So when you go in somewhere and it doesn't turn out to be what you were hoping, just remember, learn something from that, and it's okay. If you don't learn anything from it, then you're just an idiot. <laughs> that's what I'm just saying. But that being said, you got Michael Poro. He's saying some nice stuff out here. He goes, today happens once. Make it amazing. That's yes, right. Fact. And then that's he says, right. and then you, can learn, you can learn a lot from Michael Poro. Uh, he's a guy you might want to try and get on here. Uh, gosh, it just the positivity – but more importantly, really, the experience and the knowledge just pours out of him. So, uh, and I, I view him as pretty innovative person. So he's not a guy that's af- not he's not afraid to take chances, you know, um, and and do things if he sees a market force moving in a certain direction. I, I applaud him for what he does um, with his marketing and advertising now because he really promotes to where I think the customer. Uh, wants to be taken or wants to go and he makes it very easy for them so he, you know and not every dealer is doing that right now so he, no. he does a great job he's a smart guy he says the car he goes the co- the car coffee guys great job he's smart he's 100 percent right thank you we are doing a good job. <laughs> <laughs> just kidding but for real the rejection the more money and he's right you know and then you got michael off with one of our sponsors with the uh, elite fi partners he says rejection is an opportunity 100 percent and that's how you have to look at that, folks. You know, that's all mindset. That's that positive mindset. That's that forward-thinking mindset. That's that I'm never going to fail mindset. Is that when you get rejection, that's an opportunity. You know, whether- well, it's, it's very rare that you ever sell something where someone doesn't have an objection or a question at some point in the sale. So if that never comes up, you don't get the opportunity to find out what's stopping them from buying. So when they give you that objection or you get rejected, it's your opportunity to find out why. Yes. And then, then handle it. I, I agree with that. And here's what I also, and this is a, something I tell my guys, is that you're not a salesperson until an objection comes up. Because all you're at that point is just like a, a server. Like, you know, you're just giving them what they want, right? Every, it's all simple. They're not, no, okay, here you go, here you go. You show them a car, there's no nothing. They're just, yes, I'll buy it. Here's the payment. Okay, I'll buy it. Here's the down payment. Everything's so smooth. Now, granted, you can build that up. You can, you know, as we call it, you can make a lay down happen, right, by building up the deal, doing all this stuff. But we all know when you have a deal that just walks right through. We've had those, every one of us. If you've been doing this for long enough, you've had multitude of those. But the moment you become a salesperson is the moment they say no. The moment you became a salesperson is the moment that they give you a, a, any type of resistance towards where you're trying to go in your process. Yep. That's when you become a salesperson. That's when it's time for you to put on your selling shoes and make things happen. Now, you know, a lot of people are lucky. They don't have to do that too often. You know, they kind of like, you know, much like CarMax is or, you know, and things like that. They just, you come in, there's a process, that's it. See you later. There is no selling, really. There's just showing and, and then giving. So us us being salespeople, that, that is special. That is something that's amazing. That You look forward to that no because you're like, man, I'm not a salesperson until they say no. They just said no. Now I have my selling shoes on. So, sir, this is why no is not, this is why no is not the answer here. 
right? Yeah. So I love that you said that because it's you got a good point there. I, I want to take another sip, uh, okay. sip on the other side of the cup of that. Right? Okay, do that. And, and, and seeing that because a lot of times, and that is, that is the culture that we have been raised in, right? And, and understanding that we were, are not salespeople uh, until you get that first no. You're going to get four or five no's until you get the first yes. Mm -hmm. Sometimes that's just a mathematical equation. Uh, but the, the industry has adjusted in many different ways. So the, the, the person that's selling, sometimes when, when you're the biggest ninja is when you take away the no's before they even come. Mm. Yeah. You have, you have most of that already handled before they showed up to bring the no to the station. And that's where, like, if you master, like, you got to learn your 10 steps, 10 steps. But if you master one through six, seven, eight, nine, ten, just roll on through, right? You, you go ahead and, and make it to the next level if you remove a lot of the no's that they have. So there's a fine art that comes in between it, and, and a good salesman knows what no's are going to be coming. You know, that's knows true. where the objections are going to show up. Right. They, they expect the best. They prepare for the worst. So they understand, you know, I've done this long enough or I've prepared and worked hard to know that I'm potentially getting this, this. You know, I bring them up. I, if I know I'm getting a certain objection, I'm going to bring it up before the person I'm pitching to, you know, and I'm going to frame it the way I need to frame it uh, in advance. So it's uh, much easier to handle something in advance than to try and change someone's mind. Right. The last one that we want to be surprised at the table is is you. I don't want to be too surprised when we sit down to have this talk. I want to already know which questions are going to go here and here per what I'm getting ready to say. You know, I don't. I want to have taken those away in the earlier steps, in the earlier rapport building, in the earlier qualifying, taken a lot of those things away so that I can assemble it. Now, the industry also has adjusted. For some people, uh, you're, you're, once, they, once the client starts getting a no, they're not going to get what they want, they scroll to the next, right? So yep. the, the way that people are operating now, if they don't see what it is that they're getting, in a lot of cases, they already know they can skip, they can close that window out, click, go on to somebody else's website, on, and they're doing that until somebody streamlines them and gives them exactly what they're looking for, for what they want to spend, for what they want to pay. And they're trying to remove that conscious thinker Absolutely. that is prepping themselves in the morning to have that no hit them, the, the, they're interacting with the computer that's like, nope, that's not the number. <laughs> Next. Very true. Scroll up. You know, and, and so we're having to become masters in between. And people like CarMax, people like um, Carvana, people like uh, Room. These people are in the background, and we've had the pleasure of having them, you know, in the cafe. They're in the background removing these no's before the customer even knows that they show up before that that objection even shows up. And yeah. that, that's where salesmanship is happening in the background digitally, and it's amplified across digital marketing, right? And you're, you're a master of, of digital marketing that, that understands the flow that has to happen between the heat that gets put on the business itself, filter it properly, mm -hmm. and then eventually you got a good crisp cup True of... That. Uh, of Car Guy Coffee for a business. True uh, that. Just excited that you're able to do what it is that you do and that you're here doing it. Absolutely. You know, so, you know, all these things are very important, you know, like like we're talking about, having these sales skills, understanding where you're at in a deal, um, you know, that's just the salesman side of it, but that all translates to business too, you know, that's exactly what goes yeah, down. So that everything that we're learning as salespeople on the floor are things that translate to becoming a great entrepreneur. And a lot of people don't realize that because you really are on the floor. When you're out there, you are your own business. You are doing your own thing. You yes. just have your tools that you're using, such as the vehicles that you're selling, the advertising that, that the dealership provides you. That's just something, that's like rent in a sense, right? So that's where you, that's where the dock fees and that's where all this stuff comes into play, the packs and all that. That pays for all that. Then you have the vehicle that you get to get for free and all you got to do is advertise yourself, work yourself, go out there and shake hands with people, make things happen, build your own brand up, get it out there, social media, digital marketing. You could do this all yourself. Once you do all that, you get you you get it in front of you. Now you are your own business. You're a business inside of a business. And if you can translate that into the real world, have the confidence to translate that to the real world, and you do well in car business, you can do extremely well in anything that you do. I, I always say car business equals life to me because the way you are in a car business is the way you should be in life. You should always be growing. You should always be trying to look for the next sale in a sense, right? Always looking for that next thing, where, whether it's having fun in life, whether it's the next concert. It's something fun that you should be looking forward to. Um, so my next question for you is going to be, um, much like 
a lot of questions that I ask. They're very, they're, it's very, to me, it's about your past. You know, I know there's people that you, you mentioned your father, you know, I'm sure that might, this might even be the answer and maybe I'm just guessing it, but you know, there's somebody that's been a huge mentor for you. Somebody that was like that influential person that went where you went in from here to like, you know what, I'm going to jump up to here. I want to do this. Who was that person for you? Well, it wasn't a direct contact. Uh, it was a lot of, uh, I, I'll have to say Tony Robbins and Jay mm-hmm. Abraham. They're not direct mentors, though, because I have not sat there in, in, in this, I guess, in a traditional sense where I'm calling them on the phone and asking advice. Um, but I will tell you, we were in the early 90s competing for, uh, at the time, was a pretty big deal for us. Um, and I think it was something, it had something to do with Toyota. And it was a big regional type play. And I, I don't know if you remember uh, Tony Tosito with Tosito Marketing and back in those days, but he ended up getting that deal. And we asked Toyota, you know, what caused them to, to not choose us? Why did, why did we not get it? And they just didn't feel we were big enough. Hmm. All right. So this is like three or four years in into the company. And we thought big enough. I said, eh. I, I, I said, the real issue is, we're not ready to sell to this yet. We're not good enough. <laughs> it, it wasn't that we weren't big enough because we could have easily handled the job. And actually, I, in my opinion, we could have done a better job. No offense to, to Tony, but uh, but he outsold us. All right. And, and so I started looking into, all right, how do I get my sales team better? Um, started sending them to Tony Robbins, and this is his power to influence stuff, not his just life, you know, unlimited power stuff. We did that too. But I was turned on to a, a, a company up in Chicago, and I ended up buying the, the rights, uh, the licensing rights to be able to facilitate these sales trainings myself. And so they taught me um, how to do all that. And I had our reps going through the same. And, and when I tell you the training was literally we started on Thursday at, at 5 o'clock after work. We'd go to midnight. We'd come right back Friday, and it was 9 to 9, Saturday 9 to 9, and then half the day on Sunday. We watched those videos and facilitated and went through those sales training exercises every month for two straight years. Hmm. The same ass boring stories. <laughs> they weren't boring the first few times. Right. I was... I, to the point where our sales team almost revolted on me. It said, we can't do this anymore. Um, but the repetition and the understanding of that. So when you ask who my mentor is from a sales side, it would be Tony Robbins, um, Mm -hmm. has really changed is in terms of my belief system, selling techniques, my whole understanding of it. If I could have, if, if I was selling cars today with the drive I had then, when I first started, but with the knowledge I have now, uh, it, it would be, I'd love to see that combination and what the end result would be. But from a marketing standpoint, Jay Abraham, um, I really dove into, and I was exposed to him through Anthony Robbins. They had a joint venture uh, or strategic alliance where they were using each other's audience to kind of help each other grow. And, you know, now that I, I'm, I dove it all into this, I see how all this works. Right. And, uh, but I, I think I, I take a lot of stuff, especially on the direct marketing side from Jay Abraham, uh, and the Internet's just blown that up to where uh, it's made everything he's taught that much easier. Right. Well, that's what I love about the Internet. You know, it's, it's really a – and that's something that we all need to understand, that the power of this and how much you can reach out to people. I've really found the power of the Internet, of social media, especially in the last year for me. And it's really an amazing thing, the networking you can do, the people you can meet, the education that you can get for free on this stuff. I mean, unbelievable. Like, there was, you know, the one thing coronavirus did for me was I was able to have a lot more time to sit down and watch a lot of these interviews people have done, a lot of these conventions they were doing virtually. You know, I've seen a lot of fixed ops once, which I didn't know much about fixed ops. Now I know a lot. Now I know a lot of people on fixed ops, right? I also have, you know, a lot of marketers out there, people like you, you know, I've really got to meet you guys and get to know what you guys are about, watch a lot of what was going on with you, you know. I couldn't help but be attracted to the fact that you were in Louisville. Then I read, then I've seen your posts, and then I start seeing what you guys are doing and, and the people you're interviewing and, and the information that you're passing out for free. Yes. So, I mean, 
literally for free. And I, I, love I see a comment on here, Sandy. The solution is says you still have time to do that, my friend. I there's more money in what I'm doing now, so I'm not I'm not going to go back and sell cars now. I agree with you, my friend. <laughs> I wouldn't either. Yeah, you know. It, you, you however, you how, it. however, you know, it's funny when we went through those trainings. Um, I think a lot of people, and this goes back to the preparation part of it. We sit here and we think, oh man, I've never heard this objection before. How do I handle this? And how do Part of our exercises that we did throughout all this training was sitting there and, and listing our obje- the objections, the most common objections we've got, and then how do we handle them? How do we overcome? How do we turn them into questions, align with customers, not fight customers, uh, and then be able to actually turn it into a situation that benefited us? And it's amazing, and, and I would challenge anybody listening or watching this, Make a list of your most common objections. You'll find you really struggle to get past five. So what you're really trying to learn is not that monumental. Um, there's only, and it doesn't matter what you sell. We all get the same damn, ex- the same <laughs> objection. It you're right. Too much, or, you know, compared to the, it just doesn't, uh, there's not a lot of objections that are out there. And, and so what you have to prepare for isn't as monumental as you think. That's right. No. You just have to actually know what it is that you're going to be facing. You know, Correct. acknowledge it, right? You have to pull that out. And and a lot of that is asking your salespeople, right? You got to ask your salespeople, what are you hearing? You know, what is it that you're going through? Uh, let me see. We got we got so many people that are that are jumping in. Sandy. <laughs> <laughs> no, he said he, he didn't mean that as you're going to the sales floor. He meant that as yeah. <laughs> to Dano, right? <laughs> but uh, but man, these. These things that are being assembled right now, as far as the, the access points that we have in the business, are key that people like you get to express that back out there, that you received coaching from great coaches. And yeah. we are shifting into a coaching, a coaching culture. Whether you're, if you've been on the internet and you've gotten any sort of an ad, I mean, coaching is the culture, right? And you, you bought a license so that you can teach this system inside of your store, inside of your business. Um, you, we're able to then invest that into other people, have them invest the time, invest the effort, invest everything that it took in order to make those things happen. That was, right. That's huge for you because some people run an entire business off of that. Um, you invested that into your store and said you gave this to your guys. Some of your guys may not have uh, made that investment that it would take for them to go someplace and have a coach give them those things. And Tony Robbins is, of course, the champion inside of the life coaching uh, sphere, right? The you man. also get together with, with Jay Roberts. Abraham on understanding, you know, business on the other side of the coin. And then you find your secret sauce. You find your seat. What, what's motivating you? Three elements that w- you can announce and trumpet to the whole world, right? Like forgive, focus, fly. Like, like anything that most other people put out there, they move, are going to refine. Yeah, you move, crush, count. Like anything that anybody gets to, they want to refine it down to the best that they can put out. We were talking about bourbons and yes, flavors that's exactly. and the things that we want to get down to. Yes, right. We want to we want to get the the primo, the good stuff. We don't we don't want to uh, water it down. We want it to be right and and we open our, it in the customer like it. We want our coffee black. That's, That's right. it. And it's good and, and strong. For, whatever it's, it's like. Coffee it's for be closers. Black, and then it's got to be good, a little sugared up, a little creamed up. It's got to yeah. be good either way because ultimately you ain't selling no coffee if, if not everybody drinks it black. You know what I mean? Let me just say this. You know what? You, I think one of the biggest challenges that business leaders have is I think a lot of business leaders are inspired, want to learn, constantly improve. But how do we get – Everyone on our team rowing in that in that same direction. How do we keep? You know, I. It can be frustrating as a business leader, right? Because I've always, uh, when I hear someone like an Anthony Robbins talk or Tony Robbins talk or Jay Abraham, uh, what they're teaching, and their list goes on and on of these guys. I love it. I like to soak it in, and it, it can also be a, a bad thing in the sense because I get an idea and I'm like, man, that sounds like a good idea. I need to shift to this, right? But not everybody wants to, to move that, that quick. And I've always been lucky in the sense that no matter who's teaching it, I've never been one of those guys that sits there and focuses on who's teaching it and form an opinion whether I like the training or not based on it. 
In other words, I just listen to the content. Yes. And I'm looking for the gold nugget and the idea. And so it doesn't matter. The personality of the trainer has never impacted me. And so one of the struggles I'll have, right, in getting my team on is not advice that way. Uh, and, and some people, and it's hard to find that person or that, that everyone loves. So, uh, you know, it's, and let's face it, not everybody that we work with is as motivated as, as, as you might be. Right. So, and you, and, you apply a standard inside of your store, inside of your business. And if you yeah. say, look, I need you to watch this. I need you to ingest this. I need you to take this in. Then it's no longer a responsibility just of them to go seek it out. You sought it. You, you have the, the light, right? And you're trying to make sure that you deposit it into them. No different than um, an evangelist, right? He has the truth. Right. He's out spreading the word. And he wants to make sure that people get to ingest that. Uh, but inside of his house, he makes sure that that's what, what the lifestyle and what, what is actually the truth that gets brought home to. Right. Every person that is working with you is it has this desire, right, where they, they need to learn. They need to be trained. They need to uh, know that the company is there to back them up, but also to guide them forward. And as you do that and you supply great coaching, again, it's the content they get. So many of the training manuals are great car guys that have come way before us. The techniques, the words that we're going to use today at work today were somebody else's years and years and years ago, right? That, that is early on, uh, you know, one of the things I've noticed as I interview these th these people is a lot of them don't always come up with original ideas, but they do want to be different. And so to be different and to think different, they, they keep their eyes wide open and they're able to see a process or a technique and figure out how to apply it to themselves, regardless of the inter industry that they, they, they see it in. And early on, you know, I needed to be different. I go back to that Bob Hook story. I, I still remember that to this day. I mean, that that is, you know, I, let's see. Uh, that was back when I was uh, 22 years old. So that's what, 15 years ago. Right. Wow. <laughs> no, it's longer than that. <laughs> <laughs> but, but, uh, after, right? <laughs> but. That drove me. I had to think of different things. And one of these things, this podcast and some of the things that we're doing now um, has taken me back to what I really did early on. And that is, you know, I was going around the country and interviewing people that were having a lot of success with what we were doing, trying to figure out what were the things they did that elevated their results when they worked with us compared to people that were having, say, incomplete successes, right? And uh, so I was able, just looking for these things to pinpoint things down. And uh, a lot of what, you know, I think when people go through life and they've achieved certain levels of success, we always look for things to keep us motivated. And I have to tell you, the things I'm doing now, and, and I owe a lot of this to social media, has brought me back. It's almost like I've gotten better relationships with customers today uh, than I did 20 years ago. It's it's strange, and even through this COVID stuff, and I know I'm rambling on here, but uh, it's just I, you know, technology can be good, it can be bad. Uh, it's just how we use it, and, and uh, the thing how is you we have to motivate yeah. yourself. You're right. The thing is, we have to embrace it. It's the future. It is what it is. It's not going anywhere, you know, unless yeah. this whole world crashes and we have no more power or something. But until then, <laughs> until then, use this stuff. You know, you mentioned a moment ago, and I and. And it was it was a, a, a little a couple minutes ago, but you did talk about like you know you can ha you you can't always put the motivation into other people, right? You 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 know who what you're motivated, you know what you're capable of, you know what your abilities are, you know where you want your company to go, how fast you want to grow, but you can't necessarily expect that out of everybody that works with you or for you, right? The reason why is that not everybody is you, not, no one is you. For one, sure. Scott, you're an individual. Every I'm an individual. He's an individual. We all may be on a similar path and we all may be wanting to do things, but we're motivated slightly different. We like to do things a little bit different than the other person. Mm -hmm. You know, the one thing is for sure, you know, I've come as being a manager in this business long enough is I realize that my people, other people, you can't expect them to think the way you think. You know, like when they're dealing with the right. client, they're not going to think the same way. That's why we are, as managers, low people's lips. We teach them stuff. We try to educate them. But even when you do that, you could bring them to water, but it doesn't mean they're going to drink the water. All right, they're gonna, they may take a sip and then they, oh, I'm going to go do this. Eventually, hopefully, they come back and they take a big drink out of that water. But 
but not necessarily always. You know, and that doesn't mean they're bad people. It doesn't mean they're bad employee. It doesn't mean any of that. Everybody has a role somewhere. You just got to figure out what that role is and, 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 and motivate them in the way they get motivated, right? right? Yeah. And that, that's, that's a lot of it is motivate people the way they get motivated. Yep. You know, in today's world, a lot of people are not motivated. Not a lot. A few people, this new generation I've noticed is not so much money motivated. It's more time off motivated. Um, you know, is, is, the, is the job glamorous motivated? Well, we're, we're in a sales. We tend to think they're not money motivated. I think the money, I think people, I think they're the same percentage of people in this new generation are just as money motivated as the other. I think the challenge, though, that they face and some of the frustration that can come from uh, maybe people in our generation is uh, social media has done a great job. One of the bad things about social media is conditioning a, the younger or this newer generation for instant success and gratification, and they really don't like rejection. There you go. And I don't know if they handle rejection well. And and so it's one thing, if you're motivated by money and you're in sales, if you're afraid to be rejected, that's a that's an internal conflict that you've got to solve now. Uh, because selling is just about, how, you know, you know, how do you handle rejection and, and keep moving forward? So, you know, I interviewed Tom Bullitt on the podcast from uh, Bullet, yeah. Shameless Plug, but uh, from Bullet Bourbon. And I, I watched that show. That was a good one. Mm-hmm. Let, me, let me tell you something. His book is great. And what I love about his book and the message, uh, Bulletproof, was that, you know, he describes himself when he fails, he's been lucky or fortunate enough to always fall uphill. Yeah. forward <laughs> you know and and so if you're afraid of rejection and you don't respond to that well man sales anything in life is going to be tough for you that's it man and that's more of that negative mindset you know the positive mindset is this you bad things happen to positive people but it, they feel like they're failing forward instead of backwards the right. negative people when they fail they felt they to them they're failing backwards they're oh it's over right. it's done I, I suck at this or whatever Unlike, much like, you know, when you're, you know, interviewing somebody like Bullet or any, and, you know, anybody like you even, you know, when we're sitting here talking, I know that you, you fell forward. You don't fell backwards. When something happens, you're not looking at it as a fail. You're looking at it as like, wow, well, I can learn something from this. I can't wait for the next opportunity because I'm going to do it better. I'm going to do it even. I'm going to do it stronger. I'm going to go harder, you know. I've been very lucky in that sense that, um, and I don't know why that is. Like, I've never really thought about it, but. I remember in some of the early Anthony Ra, I was up in Chicago and we're going through this intense, you know, I'm one of the participants now in one of this three or four day, uh, three to four day things. And, and part of it on the unlimited power was going through what they called the Dickens pattern mm-hmm. where they make you, we stood up for, with our eyes closed and had to really dive in deep, uh, where we were. The Christmas past, Christmas present, Christmas future, and basically walked us through our life, all the things that, and man, there were people crying and in this room, and I kept thinking to myself, because, you know, they make you take you forward. If you keep going down this path, here's where you're headed, right? And it wasn't always pleasant, but I just never viewed anything bad. I was like, why are these people crying? <laughs> I, 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 we all had bad shit happen to us. It's how you perceive things because any one thing only – it nothing has any type of reality except the, the what I give it. Right. You know? That, it's true. <laughs> and, and it's fundamental. Scott, and, and that's why you have that smile on your face. That's, yes. why you enjoy, that's why you enjoy your life. That's why you're doing some amazing things. And you're – Still young, you're gonna have so much stuff that you have left to do and, and to show this world. And I'm excited to, you know, that we've become friends and that we, you know, we network together now. And I'm get to see this happen. And, and like I said, I know this guy. I see, look what Scott's yeah. doing. Look what Scott has yeah. up there, him out. right? So, you know, I know you, you're definitely in a major growth spurt right now, and I've seen that. Like I, even more than you thought, than you think. Maybe you even know. I, I, I've seen. I've been paying attention, and I see what you've been doing, and I love it. So I'm excited yeah, to see this. I'm glad that you're here today. So. You are a champion inside of the sphere that we, we are taking notes from. So I do want to ask uh, real quick because you're, you're, you touch a 
a little bit on a couple of points where people are seeking things out and, and people don't know whether they, they have a personality that they're going to like. So uh, they don't know if, if people are actually going to be able to invest in them. So they may not invest in themselves because they don't have the certainty of whether that person is going to be a great mentor for them. You brought the culture in there. I'm just trying to bring a recap, folks. We've been talking for an hour, and, and, and there's a lot of great nuggets that he's been able to put out here. Uh, but in this culture where business is now shifting to where people are not necessarily uh, having to go out to – I mean, they can. They can go to the magic box, and they can search out whatever it is that they want to find. But the businesses have now fine-tuned the tool – to be able to seek out their audience and get them engaged in the palm of their hand instantly. This is different than what radio necessarily does. This is different than what uh, television does and commercials, right? The, the entire West has changed, and the power of social media um, is still somewhat, like we said before, the wild, wild West. There's a lot of things that you can do to get the audience of your customer right away, some real ninja stuff, right? And uh, dealers are learning that. And, and, and the car business has been a little slow to turning to giving that its due attention, right? Every, it's been working. This is good. We're just going to keep doing it the way that we've been doing it and move on, right? Have you seen a lot of that going on, I'm sure, right? It's, it's amazing when everyone got locked down how quickly they, how quickly they pivoted. And, and all of a sudden, we're able to, to, to do things completely different. Than with a lot less people um, than anything they had done prior. Um, my concern is that there are some stores that I have very good relationships with, and you know, some of them I would consider mentors now. Uh, Adam Aaron's is a I love talking business with Adam Aaron's. Runs some has owned some Subaru stores up in the Northeast. Uh, the Patriot Group, uh, Patriot Nissan, Patriot Subarus, and just great operator, and and so he's learned and taking new pro processes from COVID, and he's moving forward with it full steam ahead, and is not going to go back. But I am seeing some people kind of fall back into a little bit more of that comfort zone that they had prior, and it's not where the market wants to wants to go. And so you know, I think we're creatures of of I think comfort zone is the right word there. I mean. We're comfortable doing a certain thing, and until customers flat out demand it and or you're losing so much market share, I think in the end it's the customer that's going to drive any type of real change. Can you hear me? Yeah, now I can. There you go. All right. So the, the attention that we, we actually give to the, the, the need of the customer, the way that the customer is interacting, right? Whether it's the salesperson sitting there in front of the customer, they're on the phone with the customer, this same culture of being able to coach somebody is what it is we're trying to adapt. Ultimately, what are you trying to do, sir, ma'am? What are you trying to have accomplished? What do you want? When do you want to make it happen? Right? No different than me speaking to um, a player on the football team. Son, what do you want to accomplish? What do you want to see happen? What position do you want to play? Okay, now you're, you're giving me the authority to coach you through this. So I'm going to tell you things that may be a little scathing. I'm going to tell you things that may have to uh, get you to accept different realities, to make big adjustments to you. But, if, but you have to trust with, with all certainty inside of yourself that I am pointing you in the right direction. And that fundamental mindset and stability of whoever's sitting on this side of the table applying the coaching is what we're trying to get inside of this business. Whether you're a manager trying to coach your sales staff or your yep. owner trying to coach your managers, you know what I mean? These uh, elements is something that are trickling all the way down into the culture of selling itself where we're changing the, the posture of I'm trying to sell you something and, and I'm trying to beat somebody else. The worst thing that a closer could ever do is bash Another business, bash yeah. another salesperson, bash that. That is, you've lost at the moment you started. Speaking. Let me ask you a question. How do you do that elegantly? I'm, I'm curious to learn your technique on that. I've got a technique for it, but I am curious. So bash is the wrong word because you're correct, right? We don't want to ever do that. So how do we bash without being, have being perceived as bashing? How do we get our point across 
to point out that this is not what you want, right? Or this is not the company you want without doing that. How do you guys do it? Mr. Customer, that's not exactly the direction that I thought this conversation would go, where we would be speaking about uh, right. the, the, yet, the goods and the bads of other businesses. But I don't generally participate in speaking of my competition. What I will tell you is how great I will be for you and what it is that I can actually do for you because I've earned this opportunity for this conversation. And until they do, um, I'm, I'm just going to put my best foot forward. So what is it I can help you with and where is it that you're trying to go today? Yeah. So I have to turn it back to what they're trying to achieve, no matter who it is, right, that I'm speaking to. No matter what it is that they're trying to get, I have to turn it back to what they want to accomplish. And then I can just shine myself. And if, and if I don't outshine them, so be it. I, I'll shine another day, right? Well, I, what I do, so if, if I'm pitching someone and they've got a good relationship with an existing client and or, uh, you know, whether it's good or not, they're using some other company or, or looking at it, I always, I got to find out if I, I've got to find out why they like them, right? So I'll start off on the positive and I'll say, you know, what are two or three things that, that you really like about them? And then I want to find out why, because if I can do those things better, it gives me an opportunity to see what they value most, right? And then show them how I can improve on that. Mm -hmm. But anytime I'm talking about a competitor of mine, after I ask the positive, I don't want my customer sitting there thinking about all the positives. <laughs> so I always finish that and follow that up with, well, what are two or three things that you really wish they could improve on? You know, so let the customer bash the comp the comp you know the competition so what are two or three things that they could improve on why is that important to you by not having it do this in your opinion what do you think that's costing you you know i know you don't know but if you did know what do you think it would be right. um and and so i sit there and i have the customer do it so uh now if i'm asking them what they like about me or want to see improved i'll flip-flop that I'll ask what they want to see improved by me first and finish on the positive. What do they really like about what we're doing, right? So depending on, on what topic I'm talking about, but if I'm talking about a competitor, what do you like about them? And then I'm going to have the customer talk about what they want to see improved and why. Oh, I love it, man. You know, that's, that's, I just wrote that down. I'm going to steal that. So that's, a, you know, that is um, the right way of doing it. And I love that because you didn't bash anybody. No. All you did was ask questions and they you answered it for it. you, right? Correct. And, you know, they, they may say, I don't, I don't dislike them at all. Then why are you sitting talking to me? <laughs> there's a reason why we're sitting here talking. There's something that you feel like there's something missing, and I would love to fill in that missing part. You know, whatever. It doesn't matter how happy we are or who we're working with, you know, we can always find things that we wish they could improve on. Yeah, so, that's the biggest room in the world is a room for improvement. Yeah, that's right. It's the hugest room in the world. So, you know, we, we definitely love that, and that's and you're, you're, you're thinking the right way. That's that experience that you have is going to, I appreciate you. You just gave me a tip that's going to save me probably all kinds of headaches for future business for me, right? So <laughs> that is actually a great way of doing it. And I think it's very classy. Well, if we ever come to you to sell it, forget that I told you that's what we're doing. <laughs> <laughs> all right. I'm with you. <laughs> yes, yes, oh, yes. Man. So, okay. So let's get this uh, last or one of these. The fourth question. Man, the fourth question. Man, we've been doing yeah, this. We got to we we so get rolling. Long. Wow. So um, real quick. What is it that you would say today would be the primary focus that you would say dealers and people inside of the making decision uh, house that they are in, in their business concerning marketing, uh, need to be focusing on right now? What would you say um, as far as bringing it out here? Hey, okay, ladies and gentlemen, car business, car world, this is what you guys need to be focused at, dealer. Uh, based off of everything that I have seen and done, you need to be looking at this. What would that be? I think their digital, their digital, their paid advertising, their paid search, their display, their paid social. Um, I think one of the challenges that we have is a lot of the dealers and general managers know a surface level of information on that. And I don't know if you're ever going to get it. There's a lot to learn when it comes yes. to digital on, on what it really, what makes it click. You know, if you want to crack that code, um, and the challenge that dealers have is they're not willing to go through what it takes to really learn that. And I get that. There's a lot to do. Uh, so they hire people. Um, and 
then they have the confidence in their internet market or marketing manager, e-commerce director. And we work with several really good ones. Um, and then there are a lot that um, don't know that much. And so, but they've got the full confidence of the GM because the GM doesn't want to mess with it, uh, doesn't know it themselves. And so it is important that if you're not going to be the person that really dives in and understands the numbers and the metrics that you make sure that the person that is, that you're relying on to give you that information is, knows exactly what they're doing. Right. Whether that's thorough, thorough training, uh, you got to elevate that person up. And so one of the challenges you'll have there is, you know, as a company that's, that's selling, say, digital marketing to a dealer is the GM and the dealer, they want to keep growing, right? They want success. They want to improve. They want more leads, more traffic, more sales for the same or less ad spend. But the guy that might be setting all that up, he may not get paid on the bottom line. And, and so to him, he's sitting there thinking, well, I've already got this good relationship with this with this one company. If I got to change, it's going to be more work on me, and that doesn't impact me. Everything's running smooth. The GM seems happy, and and so that's a dynamic that if you want if, if you want true growth as a dealer and GM, you've got to either dive into this and really understand it, or you've got to make sure the person that you've got mm. is as good as you think they are. I, and that's a great tip because that's exactly it. If you can't do, hire people that can, right? And make sure you can trust them. Make sure that those people that are doing the training who are masters at that are true masters. Because there's people out there that talk the talk, but they don't oh. necessarily walk the walk. We all know that. We've seen it. I've seen it a lot. And yeah. the, the thing, and that's, and it's sad. It's not like that just in the car business, folks. It's like that in the world. It's, ever, it's everywhere. Right. So, you know, when you have the right people in place that can do that, fantastic. If not, educate yourself. Get, right. you know, get, get your, get your brain going and, and learn how to do this. To be honest with you, is it complicated? It is, but is it really complicated? It's not. It's just work. It's something that you, if you constantly educate yourself, you put that 30 minutes a day of, to learning how to do this. And if you do it every single day, you become a master at it really quick. And you could be, yeah. and you can understand what's going on. But understand, people, you're an owner, you're a GM, whatever you are, you're a busy person. I know your hands are in all kinds of stuff. You're making sure this is going good. You're making sure the people in the back office are not fighting with each other. You're make, there's so many things that you have to do throughout the day that, it, that having the right people in place is key. Having the right culture in place is key. Having a good training company, like a marketing company like JNL Marketing come in and help you out is huge, you know, and stuff like that. So make sure that you're, you're reaching out and you're looking for the right people, you know. In this business, we've all been through a lot of fun stuff. We've all, we've all been able to help people. We've been able to teach people things. We've also been able to learn. You know, one thing that we all have is some rewards from this business. Yes. Now, speaking of that, this is our fifth question for you, our fifth and final question for the Five Liner. And the fifth question I'm going to have is, what is your greatest reward from doing this job, you know, from being in this business, from, from doing what you do? What has been the greatest reward? Um, probably seeing the impact it's had on other people. Um, mm -hmm. I mean, it's easy to say that from a customer standpoint, but really I think it just from the people I work with. Um, some people have really done well. And, uh, you know, I never really sit back and, and think, oh, you know, Look what, what's been created because of all this. But it does give me great pride uh, and joy uh, to think, to see these people enjoying their lives to, to a certain level, uh, you know, to a certain, they've gotten, they've achieved certain levels of success that, you know, I, I can remember back when I first started, I, I there's, a, there's a good 10 people that can I could rattle off right now that, when we started all this stuff, there's probably no way anybody thought any any of what we have now would, would have been uh, was probably <laughs> not in the, the thought process at the time. And so it, it's great to look and see the impact of how we all impacted each other. Uh, I, I think that would be the that's, most. Uh, that is a great reward to have, you know, and that's yeah. something that you'll always remember. You know, this 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 business is, has brought a lot of like amazing things to a lot of people. You know, this, this business yeah. is unlimited income. This business is unlimited networking. This business is unlimited fun. Is there stress that comes involved with this job? Yes. But folks, tell me a job that doesn't have stress. Come on. Yeah. Tell me one. 
If you can find that one job, let me know because it's it's. And if, I guarantee if it, if it's out there, you don't get paid much. <laughs> so, uh, sales is a very hard, high paying job. It's also a very easy, low paying one. Oh my God! I love how you put that. I've never heard it that way. That is that is. I'm writing that down. Oh my God! I love that. So you know. <laughs> it's, it's, it's exactly that. It's those yeah. two things. <laughs> I love it. It's, uh, it's something that we all uh, find a way to <laughs> value, and sometimes we, we we don't always value it the way that we should. And the great thing about uh, every single day is we get the opportunity to get both this and fly together. We get the opportunity to keep growing. We get the opportunity to brew with solutionaries. We get the opportunity to build relationships yeah. over revenue every day. And uh, one of the most valuable things that I have inside of my experience in the car business is the relationship that I have here with Fred, yep. the relationship that I have with other uh, great car guys. And that at the end of the day, when we're done uh, beating our chest and we're done being the champions that we are, we actually get to look around and be like, man, this guy that I give so much crap to, I love him. Man, man. My life is so much better because I have been with you. I'm so oh, grateful yeah. uh, for the opportunity that we've had to do with you during the Spotliner to get to know you uh, so much more. And there's so much more to go. I'm, we're going to have so many more conversations in the future. I can see it. I can I can hear it now. And I'm excited about it. Thank you so much, all you solutionaries that have been chiming in. 